Ladies and gentlemen, YouTube have terminated our series without any justification. They did so without a single prior warning given to us as to which, if any, rules were broken. They did so totally arbitrarily and without giving us the opportunity to explain our side of the story. This is a draconian act against all known judicious laws, whether Judeo-Christian or not, excepting, of course, Sharia law. We have not broken a single one of their terms and conditions, but this did not stop them from knuckling under to the followers of Muhammad who flag any and all sites that expose the truth and facts about Muhammad and his Quran. Paraphrasing Edmund Burke, I say, all that is necessary for evil to triumph is that good men and women do nothing. A lot of the history of the struggle between good and evil can be explained by Edmund Burke's observation. Time and again, those who profess to be good clearly outnumber those who are evil, yet those who are evil prevail far too often. It is almost never that numbers determine the outcome of a struggle, but whether those who claim to be good men and women are willing to stand up and fight for what they know to be right. There is an enormous number of examples of this sad and awful scenario being played out over and over again in scriptures and in history. Freedom is never handed freely. People must have to struggle and go to war to secure their freedom. It is humanity's most precious treasure. Without it, we are nothing more than domesticated animals being herded and controlled by tyrants. To keep this most precious treasure safe and sound, we must all be vigilant as well as ready to defend and to preserve it at all costs. We are free because our fathers, mothers, brothers, sisters and or grandparents fought and died to keep us free. We have not earned this freedom. It was bequeathed to us through the sacrifices of others in its defense. As the guardians and custodians of the liberty of our own children, our grandchildren and all our future generations, we have no other choice but to continue the process of preserving it. We have absolutely no right to squander it and let our descendants live as slaves to any political or religious organization. When good men and women do nothing, they get nothing good done. When good men and women do nothing, evil triumphs by default. The fundamentalist followers of Muhammad have had and continue to have a single and very publicly declared objective in mind to Islamize the whole of humanity, to subjugate it, or to slaughter it. You must all remember that it was Muhammad in his Quran that unilaterally declared total and eternal war against us, the so-called unbelievers, and not the other way around. We, who are free human beings, outnumber the followers of Muhammad, and yet it is not inconceivable that they could win because of our self-interest, divided agendas, and differences. In reality, we have the collective ability, technologically, intellectually, numerically, and militarily, if the will were there, to completely overcome and re-educate the followers of Muhammad in a short period of time. We have been terminated because of the fact that we have been revealing in every single chapter of ours that addressed different facets of either Muhammad or his Quran based entirely upon their own records in the Arabic language, our own mother tongue. I would like to repeat yet again to those who have not listened to our series and even to those who have that our issue is not with the majority of the followers of Muhammad who are the first and worst victims of the cult of Muhammad and Islam but with the message of Muhammad's Quran especially and the fundamentalists who believe and act upon his verses. We as any believers in the one and only God are Muslims, a fact that has been deliberately and willfully ignored and falsified by the followers of Muhammad for the last 1400 years. I would like to reiterate once again that it is entirely by divine justice that the very hadith that explain the Quran and traditions to the followers of Muhammad are the same, that utterly discredit the veracity and alleged divine origin of the Quran as we have been able to demonstrate in 101 chapters before we were silenced. The fundamentalist followers of Muhammad demonstrate their depravity, hate-mongering, racism, war-mongering, tyranny, disloyalty, hypocrisy, cowardice, stupidity and ignorance in almost every corner of the globe, perpetrated not only against so-called unbelievers, but also against other sects of so-called believers. 
All of you who want to actually see them in action should go to www.memory.com, M-E-M-R-I, which is the Middle East Media Research Institute, which has a library of thousands of videos from all over the Islamic world in their own Arabic language with translations from their own media. You will, I guarantee you, find the most mind-boggling videos ever about Mohammedan Islam not scripted by Christian pigs or ape-like Jews or Western imperialists or Hindu kuffar, but by the followers of Muhammad themselves. You will be able to see and listen, for example, to a Mohammedan scholar in this 21st century refuting the spherical shape of the earth because the Quran states that it is flat. He asserts that all the satellite pictures that we have are false since they contradict the Quran. Or mullahs screaming at their congregations, assuring them that Mohammedan Islam is superior to all other belief systems and without so-called Islamic science, the West would still be living in caves. As I mentioned previously, any belief is not a negotiable item, no matter how contrary to facts and reality it may be. That is exactly why the followers of Muhammad who made comments to our chapters, could not and would not agree to any of our statements without having to abandon their Mohammedan Islamic beliefs, without apostatizing. They thus must remain in denial for the rest of their lives. The worst to suffer among the Mohammedans are their women folk, who are considered by Muhammad and his male followers, as we have amply demonstrated, as just one rung up the evolutionary ladder than domestic animals. They are enslaved, terrorized, subjugated, kept in most cases as ignorance, humiliated and subjected to genital mutilation by their males so as to control their mind, their body and their soul. The ability of the followers of Muhammad to coerce our spineless and mindless political, religious, media and academic elites is based upon two items, fear of violence and petrodollars. It is left to all of us, the neglected and marginalized people, the absolute majority in all of our countries, to achieve what our ignoble leaders are not willing to do. We in the Western democracies especially, wield infinitely more power together than we as individuals can ever imagine. We are the ones who elect and pay the taxes that keep most of these imbeciles in power. We are the ones who serve and keep the internet, Google and YouTube alive and going. We together can move not only mountains, but governments out of power when we act together and in concert regarding very legitimate issues that concern all of us. The security and inviolability of our freedom and democracy is at the forefront of our aspirations and concerns. We should create a movement on the Internet that can influence our elected policymakers to pay attention to our real and not imaginary fears at the threat of Mohammedan Islam from within and without. This movement will also make it difficult for anyone on the internet to silence or prohibit us from expressing our freedom of expression. As far as we are concerned, we shall continue our program of educating, enlightening and exposing the facts and reality of Mohammedan Islam to the whole world of so-called believers and unbelievers based entirely upon the very Arabic sources themselves and no other. We shall once more upload all our previous chapters with new ones and hope you will once again spread the word about us and save our chapters in your blogs out of harm's way. We would like to take this opportunity to thank all of you who have come to our defense in an outstanding and heartwarming show of wrath and disgust at our treatment and for the right of all of us to have a free and unfettered ability to express our opinions.